Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's Fiber Adventures.com. And we invite you to join our Two U's Fiber Adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 Projects. And I am Better in Motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry, and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. <laughs> Marcia, you're sitting right next to me. I know, Kelly. I don't have to say hello because I've been with you since Thursday. Yes. So here we are, we're sitting in the sunroom at Kelly's house, and we're sitting on the sofa, and we're knitting. And we're trying to make sure that we speak into the microphone, (laughs) but we don't have as good of acoustics in this room. And we've got the microphone perched (laughs) between us. Webster's uh, International Dictionary, which is about six inches thick, four (laughs) inches thick, it's propped up between us. So we'll see how we sound. So, Kelly, lots to talk about. What are you working on? Well, Oh, no, finished projects. What have you finished? I haven't finished anything. Okay. So I don't have anything that I finished, but I made a lot of progress on the Havana tea. I was working on that at the retreat, and I am all the way down the body, about just a little bit above my belly button, so I just need to keep going. You could stop there. No, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be a look. (laughs) That's true. A look. (laughs) So yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's, It's coming out really, really beautifully. I love the yarn. It's the Dragonfly Fibers Dance Rustic Silk. And it's, it's a very pretty color. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. And I like the way the yarn feels and I like the way it it knits up. It's a hundred percent silk noil. So it's this silk waste, but it makes a really beautiful yarn. And it's fingering weight, so it'll make a nice a nice T shirt. So it's the pattern is uh Havana, but it's spelled like Savannah, not like Havana, Cuba. And it's by Heidi Marie Kaiser. Oh, and I think the last few times I haven't remembered the color of the yarn Mm -hmm. that I bought, but it's, I looked it up and it's called Winter Woods Mm -hmm. is the color of that yarn. It's a brown with some rust, kind of a taupey brown with some rust color and some just um, every once in a while, a uh, like spot of a dark, dark, deep, tr- uh, like like eighty percent dark chocolate mm-hmm. brown. So I really like, really like it. And then the other thing I was working on at the retreat that I made pretty good progress on is the Edie that I'm working on. In fact, we were having a little Edie Palooza at mm-hmm. the at the retreat, um, and the Edie is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. It's a t-shirt V-neck top down and I'm using a yarn called linen concerto and it's in it's a the color is called ocean splash and it has uh, turquoise it's it's kind of a neutral base and then the neutral base has a turquoise and a green kind of variegated so when you when you I was a little worried knitting it up. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, whether it was going to be kind of blotchy or whether it would pool. But it's working up kind of into stripes, mm-hmm. although they're not they don't have like hard definition. Yeah. So but it's not really pooling. No, it's yeah. it's really um, it's really nice. And I I was worried because I thought, well, is it. You know, when you when you work this pattern, you work it flat until you join at the bottom of the V-neck, and then you start working it in the round. Mm-hmm. And so the stitch count really changes, and the way of knitting it changes. You know, you're doing all those increases, so the number of stitches increases significantly uh, between the start of it and the where you join, where you join it. You know, at the bottom of the V-neck. And so I was worried, was there going to be a dramatic difference between the way it was striping up or pooling? And it, it's not. It's really, it's coming out really nicely. So I'm very excited. I think that will be a great shirt to wear. So 
What are you uh, knitting on right now, Marcia? Well, that segues into what, because I'm also making the Edie uh, t-shirt by Isabel Kramer. I'm using Hempathy uh, in the, it's called Tan. And I am now, let's see, as you, as you said, you work at flat, so you do the V. I had connected the V at home, but on Thursday, on the plane, on the way down, I put the uh, sleeves on waist yarn. So I've been from the underarm down, and I've done, what, seven and a half inches, I think? Yeah, that I worked looks- on at the, um, uh, at the retreat. So I worked on the EDT most of the time at the retreat, and then I would take breaks, and I would go and work among work on the, the shawl I'm making called Among the Shadows by Colleen Kinnersley, and I'm using Entropy by Feederbrook uh, Farms and the colorway Absolute Zero. And I made pretty good progress on that. I have uh, just a two-inch ball left. And last night, Kelly and I were talking about how I want to use up all of that yarn. Um, so the I should say about the shawl is it starts out with garter stitch and increases on the edges. And then you move into um, bands of stockinette and garter stitch. Um, and then you finish with a ribbing, a two-by-two two ribbing. And so it says, I don't remember now how many rows you're supposed to do, but I decide I'm just going to do that ribbing until I use up all the yarn. But I need to allow enough for binding off. So last night, Kelly, you said, um, uh, weigh the ball, uh, the ball of yarn, knit a row, and weigh it again. So I did that, and I'm using two grams of yarn per row. Okay. And I just looked it up before we started recording. I have 18 grams left. Okay. So I'm going to figure seven, seven rows, rows seven rows, and then I'll bind off. Yeah, and then you'll have a little tiny bit of yarn left over, but that's yeah. better than running out partway through a the binder. A little bind tiny up. piece of yarn that I will save probably <laughs> and put it in my scrap box because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Well, and you, you were mentioning earlier, and I don't know that you ever mentioned it before, I don't think I realized that that yarn is... Blue face luster. Yes, it's very. How would you describe the feel of that yarn? It's very silky. It's silky and it's kind of poofy. I mean, mm-hmm. it's very soft. It has a lot of. Is that sti- would you call that stitch definition? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it's like after I wash it because I will admit I did not do a swatch. <laughs> I just I knit a little gate, a little swatch. I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's good enough, and started knitting. Because they they said actually gauge was not critical in this um, pattern, um, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like when it washes. But I really like the feel because it is that that really smooth feeling, but it's kind of um, bouncy. Yeah, it has some body to it. Yeah. So okay, I got another ten foot section. All right, we have a guest in the <laughs> podcast today. Did you hear that? Robert's got another ten foot section. Of the pipe that he's using for the shower drain. For the sauna. For the sauna. So and it works. Will and we, it, will we and it a, works. Will we have a drain tonight? The drain is there. The drain works. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. The <laughs> but I don't think you should probably use it yet. Oh, okay. All right. I won't then. Still the garden hose then, right? <laughs> Probably still the garden hose, yeah. What was I talking about? Oh, the shawl, right? And so then I, the the yarn is is has a crispness to it, yeah, but it's also yeah. but it's also really silky. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I like it. So it's gonna be, and it's very different colors than I ever knit with. Wouldn't you say? It's kind of mm-hmm. uh, pale blue, pale cream pale tan it's very pale a little even a little bit of like violet in there too Mm -hmm. it's and it's kind of frosty looking Mm -hmm. and the color called absolute zero you get the idea but it's it's yeah it's all sort of frosty blues and greens and a little bit of purpley pink yeah so it's not it's good to get out of your the color i mean your color palettes we tend to sometimes i think always pick the same Yarn, same color, mm-hmm. so it's kind of nice to get out of something, uh, the same color palette. Anyway, and then, but the other project I brought with me to work on at the retreat was the Easy Folded Poncho by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. And I'm using the Elizabeth Laval Silky Wool that I got at the Goodwill in Navy. And I don't think I even touched it this weekend. Well, and Navy is probably not a good choice of color for 
the retreat because yeah. although the lighting was better this year, but it was rainy for mm-hmm. a good portion of the of the retreat. So gray skies, the light was you know not the best. We weren't outside, mm-hmm. so I can understand why you didn't why you didn't work on that. Well, it, it wasn't so much that. It's just that I was really wanted. I I was hoping to finish the shawl there at the retreat and make good progress on the the ed. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Anyway, but that's coming along. So that's it for projects. I, right. I have nothing to, nothing done. Oh, I know what to tell you, too. I did bring my... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> my much-traveled and unfinished Pismo Beach socks. <laughs> Someday, I really am going to... I don't normally have a bottle of champagne when I finish a pair of socks, but I think this <laughs> pair of socks, I may have to. That pair of socks would be, <laughs> yes. I think they would be champagne-worthy. They've been on the needles for, for quite a while. Anyway... Which we'll talk about it later, but we did make a trip through P- Pismo Beach. We did, yeah. And I brought those socks with me, Kelly. <laughs> they were in my project bag. They the got car. to they got to return home for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for projects, but we should talk about the retreat. Yes, it was the Northern California Knitters Retreat, mm-hmm. affectionately known as Knockers, and it was held in San Juan Batista, California. At the, um, what's the correct name of the center? St. Francis Retreat Center. Yeah. And uh, very nice. It's it's uh, simple. Yeah. It, very simple, but it's, of course, it's the type of architecture I love. It's all that California mission style and tile roofs and tile walkways everywhere and, mm-hmm. and jade plants growing everywhere with the trunks the size of tree trunks, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which, you know. Jade plants in the Pacific Northwest are house plants. But anyway, so it was really fun. And there were, I think, aren't there about 60 attendees? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was our third year. So it was fun to meet up with people that we met the first year. But then um, there was also new Yeah, there were there. a few There were a few new people. So that, that was, was really fun nice to meet. Yeah. This retreat, they don't have a lot of activities. Because really the point of this retreat is just to socialize and knit. And so they do have a, um, um, a try it on. So you can bring any of the articles that uh, knit, knitwear or crochet or, or woven items that people can try on. Um, they have a, a, what do they call that, a sock exchange? I think where if you, if you participate in this, you um, bring a, a skein of sock yarn. And they put it all, put them in paper bags, individual paper bags, and then the people who donated a skein of sock yarn get to go pick out of the pile of paper bags. And uh, so that was really fun to, to watch that. It was interesting too how ever, how many green and blue colorways. There was only one mm-hmm. um, that was kind of um, a rust or a pumpkin color, I think. Over the, pretty yeah. much all the colors were yeah. blues and the, greens. The colors, the colors were all toward the blue green. Yeah. So pretty cool. yarns, though. Lots of pretty sock yarns. Yeah. It was fun. And then the other thing that's nice about the retreat is they really, they um, everybody gets uh, a door prize. Yeah. So, Kelly, do you want to talk about what you got? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I want to talk <laughs> about what I got? So. I'm a little jealous. Since the. <laughs> well, let me say, I was, I was a lot jealous until I got my door prize. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm just a little jealous. So and and they're randomly drawn. Um, they they actually draw names each two the two nights after mm-hmm. dinner, and so it wasn't purposeful that I ended up with this. But since I finished my poncho, the Om shawl using Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Worsted, I have just been such a big fan of Neighborhood Fiber Company yarns and at stitches. I, I I didn't get any more because I had just finished that, but boy, was their booth tempting at Stitches. And anyway, what I ended up with for my door prize was one of their gradient sets. It's a set of, uh, I I don't have it sitting here with me, but I want to say like seven, ska- seven mini skeins, six uh, there's mini five. Skeins. Oh, I five? Think, I think there's five. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's sort of a turquoise again blue the blues Mm -hmm. turquoise to like a light turquoise that almost glows Mm -hmm. it's so luminous the color 
to a dark, deep kind of cobalt blue mm-hmm. at the bottom of the the color pattern in this gradient. Gorgeous. It's a singles yarn, and I am really thinking about making. Um, I'm thinking about making a shawl. I sort of thought about making a really because it's a lot of it's a lot of yardage. Yeah, that's a lot. I make yeah. a really big, just a big blankety shawl. So, but it could also be a very nice poncho, <laughs> right? Could yes. it be oh, a very? Could. Everything could be a nice. <laughs> yes, it could be a poncho. It, it would make a really. It would make a really pretty poncho. And there were some ponchos that I looked at that were more yardage than what I had. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll become a poncho. But right now, it's just beautiful to look at. It was very nice of Neighborhood Fiber Company to donate that Mm -hmm. for a door prize. Mm -hmm. And then the universe smiled on me, and I won it. (laughs) Yeah, that's very nice. It is is kind of iridescent. It's right. Mm-hmm. Blows, yeah. The color is just so bright and yeah. yeah, nice. Anyway, I won. My door prize was a skein of Sincere Sheep Company, that uh, part of the Terrar Fiber Series, and the colorway is a Gian, so it's turquoise. Would you say a light turquoise? Mm-hmm. And it's sport weight Cormo, and this series is nice because it says the ranch where the fiber came from. And so this uh, Cormo came from Nile, Nine Mile Ranch in KC, Wyoming. So I was very happy to get that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's turquoise, like mine. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's funny because all of the sock yarn, we, neither one of us participated in the exchange, sock yeah. yarn exchange, but we... But we did watch, and all of that sock yarn was kind of in the greens and blues. Mm-hmm. And then the gradient set that I got was turquoise, and the yarn that you got was turquoise. Yeah. It's right now. It's sitting in her bag next to a kind of an orange color yarn, and it's really pretty. It looks like it will be really pretty together. Well, and before we started recording, we were talking about it. The when we were at Stitches, we bought. The, oh, that's my yarn. Is that my yarn? This one? Yeah. I know I didn't steal that from you. I <laughs> where did mine go? It's I not in the bowl anymore. I don't know where that is, but that one I got, which we we're going to talk about from the, D, I got that from the D-Stash oh, room. Okay. I swear, Kelly, I got it from the D-Stash room. But yes, I was thinking because we both bought the same color. Right. That, that. Well, yeah. Why would you steal it from me? Because you have your own, that Rambouillet, <laughs> that orange that we got at Stitches. Yeah. So I don't remember. Do you remember the weight of that? Um... I think it's worsted. Worsted? Yeah, okay. I think so it's a worsted. I, can't, I probably can't combine, I can't combine them then. But anyway, it, it, but I, I, when I picked this up at the D-Stash room, I thought it looked a lot like the one we bought at um, Stitches. Mm-hmm. And now that's why I put them together, just to see if I like the colors. I'm going to check it before, <laughs> <laughs> before you leave. Make sure it's not my sincere sheep that you're <laughs> liberated. Oh, and then they also had door prizes for... The, the people who had made the the knockers, the actual mm-hmm. knitted knockers, which are the knitted uh, prosthetics for uh, women who are going through b- breast cancer, had a mastectomy. And remember they said how many? It was over 200 were, yeah. were donated. And so everybody who donated to the knockers drive, to, to they all got to participate in a, another drawing. A drawing, yeah. And those are some pretty nice think, prizes, mm-hmm. too. Well, the grand prize... The grand prize drawing for the people who, there are, I think, four or five people who contributed the, the largest number of knockers. And so they went into a drawing, and the grand prize was a sweater's quantity. Yeah. It was yeah. a nice, yeah, it was nice. nice prize. I didn't get to any of knockers this year. I'll have to add that to my summer charity knitting because yeah. I, I haven't done any yet. So but before we talk about our guilty pleasure... We also, but we also have to mention too that this year at the retreat, um, Elizabeth Doherty um, did a nice talk about linen and knitting mm-hmm. with linen, and that was fascinating. And um, it, for anybody who's in our area, she's actually going to be doing that same talk I saw at Monarch. Mm-hmm. Um, not this coming weekend because this coming weekend is Easter, but but the following weekend. Um, so if there's space available, there might not be space available anymore, but if there's space available, 
Um, um, yeah. So it was very interesting. It was very interesting about how linen is made and then, um, but mostly just the techniques of knitting with linen. And um, wasn't she saying, you know, for example, one of the things is uh, you often need to go down up to two needle sizes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, Oh, and she gave everybody a little uh, ball of linen, and well, while she's doing the talk, you could make a, um, she gave everybody a pattern for a, like a bath mitt. Mm-hmm. So people, a lot of people were working on that. So it was really fun. But um, our guilty pleasure, Kelly, we will just t- touch on this briefly, our guilty pleasure, because we always feel a little guilty about it, but. Well, yes, but I don't feel guilty this year. No. I got... Actually, it's, it's kind of funny. I have to laugh at myself. Like, why did I get th- Why did I take this? But I have this thing about mohair. <laughs> and I don't know why I have a thing about mohair. I had a vest when I was in junior high. And I actually bought it in the boys' department. It was like a brown kind of argyle pattern vest. Mm-hmm. Brown it with the orange stripes, the orange, <laughs> pale orange argyle stripes, and it was mohair or mohair I don't know, something similar to mohair and and furry. And oh my gosh, I loved that vest. And then, do you remember in college, Marsha, the black sweater that I had? Mm-hmm. I had a black sweater that I found at the Goodwill, <laughs> and I'm actually I have been on a search for a similar sweater pattern for a long time. It had an enormous shawl collar. The shawl collar was so big that it kind of went down and covered over your shoulder like a second layer. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit moth-eaten. But, um... (laughs) (laughs) There are a few places where it was a little thin. I think the, the, uh, the, the hairy part of the mohair had been eaten off. But then I wore it with a belt. I ha- it didn't have any closure. And so I think it probably had like a belt tie that had long since disappeared. And I cut off the, the little things that the belt, mm-hmm. you know, tie belts go through. Mm-hmm. I cut those off, but I used like a I don't know, leather belt. And I wore that as a coat all through my, probably my junior and senior years in college. I loved that thing. Oh my gosh. It was my favorite. It was my absolute favorite garment. And I've been looking for a sweater pattern. You don't have it. What happened to it? You know, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, I'm, well, it probably went in the Goodwill at some point, mm-hmm. you know, back to the Goodwill at some point. But I don't really remember the moment of doing that. Maybe because it was so traumatic. <laughs> you blocked it. I blocked it out. <laughs> So anyway, I do have a thing about mohair. And for some reason, probably because it wasn't real mohair. I think it was, though. Anyway, it it didn't really make me itch. Hmm. And maybe also because I was wearing it as a coat. So it was always over, over multiple yeah. layers. The winter in Walla Walla was pretty cold. And so, anyway, I love mohair. Even though wool makes me itch. And mohair really makes me itch. Um, but I got, so to get back to this, get off the tangent and back to the main story <laughs> in the D stash room were three, count them, <laughs> three skeins of Schaefer yarns, mohair hand dyed in the Rosa Parks colorway. And it's a kind of burgundy with a little bit of orangey pink and dark, um, Maybe like a dark brown, would you say? I don't have that with us either. It's like a char- it's like a dark black char- or like charcoal or maybe gray. Like a, maybe a gray. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I couldn't you, resist. So you're making that coat. I think I might have to. I don't. I don't know that there's enough to make that coat. There's only like 800. I think there's like 800 yards. But I think I might make a vest. <laughs> <laughs> It won't be a pullover argyle vest like the one I bought in the boys' department when I was in seventh grade. But I think I'm going to make a furry vest. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Stay tuned. So after you knit, then do you brush it or something? What do you? Yeah, I'll I'll brush it so it's really furry. (laughs) (laughs) Right now, it's a little bit matted. 
In fact, it looked mm-hmm. like it was fiber. It was on the table with the fiber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't even, you had to show it me that it was yarn. I didn't even see that. Well, it was and yarn. I was I didn't I thought it was fiber too at first, and then I and then I looked at it more cl- closely and saw that it was actually mohair yarn. So yeah, that was one of the things I got my big my big score from the D stash room, and then the other thing that I got in the D stash room is there was a bag of cotton yarn, just little balls of leftover cotton mm-hmm. yarn, and so every time I would go in the D stash room, if I saw another ball of cotton, a little ball of cotton, I would put it in that bag, and I thought to myself, okay, if this bag is still here on Sunday. Saturday night. If this bag is still there on Saturday night, I'm taking it. <laughs> so, so all day Friday and Saturday, I was every time I'd find a little ball of cotton, I'd add it to the bag. So I brought home a pretty good sized bag mm-hmm. of cotton scraps to add to my cotton stash. I have a lot of scraps of cotton. So, what do you use the cotton well, for? I have this idea that I'm going to use them for for dishcloths, mm-hmm. but I also um, I also like to have them because they make nice uh, warp yarns if you're doing a co- like a cotton baby blanket or if you wanted to do the co- most of them are a little thick for dish towels mm-hmm. but if you wanted to do like placemats mm-hmm. or a table you know a table runner you you can go through one of those little balls with just like depending on the size of the thing you're making, maybe one or two warp threads, mm-hmm. you know. And so so you can get a nice variation of color where you have a couple warp threads of this color and a couple warp threads of this other color. And the baby blanket, the Fiesta baby blanket that I made for um, a friend at work was made that way. And then as weft, I just used some white cotton. It made a really nice, colorful baby blanket. Yeah, it was, it was very cute. Yeah. yeah, it was nice. So, I have more cotton in my cotton stash. Well, I don't need to talk specifically what I got. I just picked up... (laughs) (laughs) That means it was a lot. (laughs) And she doesn't want to fess up to all of it. (laughs) That's true. No, I... You know, well, it was at... And I can't remember. I guess it was the first year I went that I got the balls of D-stash yarn that I made the shawl. The shawl that is sitting right here on Mm -hmm. the sofa. And I think that's why I pick, I'm sort of captivated with this idea of getting this, these uh, balls of yarn that are 200 yards and then making a shawl out of them. And it's kind of fun just to play around with the colors, too. Like, you yeah. just keep mixing the colors. and It's kind of like a box of crayons. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I did pick up a um, um, some stuff I may give away. I'm not sure. But anyway... It was fun. It's, I really, I do like that D stash room. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know the other thing too is project bags. I got right. three po- project bags. One of the um, the women who attended, she actually had came walked into the room with this armload of project bags, and before she even got to the D stash room, people were taking bags. I yeah, I'm not sure if she even made it to the D stash room. I don't know, but I got a really cute one. It's uh, and then in the D stash room, I picked up two. So, I don't need any more project bags. I think I'm set now. You have enough for for life? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that was Knockers. Anything else we need to add about the Knockers retreat? It was just really fun. We were laughing because they we always had our 8, 12, and 6, 6 p.m. Um, feedings. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of food mm-hmm. and, and good food. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, we've joked about how sitting is the new smoking, Mm -hmm. and we did a lot of sitting. Yeah. A lot of sitting and knitting. But I think that we did enough laughing to compensate (laughs) for the sitting, because laughing is healthy. Yeah. So I think the healthiness, the healthfulness of the laughing far outweighs the amount of sitting that we did. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, we had to walk to dinner, too. (laughs) (laughs) We had to walk to all those meals. Sure, Marsha, yes. Yes. You know, one of the things that, that thinking of walking up to dinner, on the way up to, on the way up to, from the main part of the, of the retreat center where we were, to the newer part of the retreat center where the, the dining hall is, um, they had, in between them, they have a native, like plantings with with mostly mm-hmm. native plants, 
and it was interesting to see it this year. They they actually did a lot of additions to the native garden. I noticed they were doing a lot of plantings because we've had such a wet winter. It's a perfect time mm-hmm. to add to the native garden. But it was interesting to see it this year, having had a winter that is you know more than normal rain compared to the past years when it's been so dry. Yeah, the first year was just parched. Mm-hmm. It was, there, it was mm-hmm. very dry. The grass was brown. And, yeah, yeah. Um, there was, I mean, the the sage and you know the the native plants were they were surviving, but they they sure didn't look as as good as they did yeah. as they did this time. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it was nice to see all the native plants that they have planted and oak tree, beautiful oak trees, and so the the retreat center is really. Really pretty. Really pretty. So, I think that's it about knockers. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I I think if you have the opportunity, I would just say, wherever you are, if you have the opportunity to attend a retreat, and, you know, different people have different flavors of retreats, and different people retreat... Well, what did I say? Everyone retreats in their own way. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, (laughs) some people like a retreat with a lot of activities. I like a retreat like this one where they publish a schedule and like every other item on the schedule is relax. Relax, eat. Relax, (laughs) eat. Relax, (laughs) eat. Yes. (laughs) So, but, but I would, I would highly recommend, this is the only retreat I've ever been to. I'd like to go to. I'd like to go to others, but I just think if you have the opportunity to go to a retreat, I would say do it. Yeah. It's very fun to get together with like-minded people and mm-hmm. just get inspired by what they're doing, what they're knitting, what they're working on. So Well, and also I would say it's amazing to me how much was accomplished in that weekend. I mean, some women knit so fast, and men too, mm-hmm. I'm assuming, but there are only women at this retreat, but... Watching them knit, they're, I mean, yeah. you know, if you could harness that energy, you could mm-hmm. power a small city. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, you, some women really knit fast and produced a lot this yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really fun to see. I don't knit that fast, but anyway. Well, you made good progress, too, yeah, though. Yeah, I did. So I just want to let everyone know that we just took a little bit of a break. And while we were on our break, I went looking for my sincere sheep. She was on her way to go through my suitcase. <laughs> but I found it. And where I, was it, Kelly? It was downstairs on the dining room table. <laughs> like in the middle of the dining room table. Anyway. Yes, yes, yes. So, Marcia didn't steal it, just so everyone knows. She has been, uh, she has been, uh... I'm the model house what, guest. What's that, what's that, what is that called when you're, um... She's been acquitted. Oh, acquitted, yes. <laughs> of her crime of yarn yeah. theft. <laughs> anyway. So we should talk about what we did after the retreat. What mm-hmm. we did on Monday and since... Uh, yeah. So yeah. you want to talk about that, Kim? Yeah. So Start on some. Monday, we had an appointment to go down to Ranch of the Oaks and pick up the yarn that I had processed by Meta and Tom. So I had left with them, I I know I mentioned it before on a podcast, I don't know if I ever said what I, what kind of fleeces I left, but I had, I had um, Shetland and Romney and uh, Rambouillet and a Merino fleece and a fleece that was Corydale crossed with Border Lester. So I had left those with them back in the beginning of December to be processed and they were ready. And so we decided that we wanted to go and pick them up while Marsha was here so she could see their, their milling operation, which Mm -hmm. is really, I think it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I, if I had a space and also not the job I have right now, that would be just an interesting thing to learn how to use all that machinery and just do milling. I, I just think that cottage cottage milling, cottage industry yarn mill mm-hmm. is just a really a really interesting way to. Um, I don't know. I just think it's a really interesting part of the yarn business. So we went down there and picked up our fleeces and got to uh, go into the corrals with the alpaca and llama. 
Yeah, and they have... Um, how did you feel in there? Did you feel uh, good in there? Well, I, I had felt a, a little leery. Yeah, this was my second time. When Aunt Betty and I went down in December, we got to meet the alpaca crew, the, the mamas and babies. And so I had been in the pen before with them. But yeah, it's a little intimidating. I mean, it's multiple alpacas. She has a lot. Yeah, little babies. The babies are darling. I think there were six, I think she said there were six six with babies. And they have really big eyes. Yeah. Did you notice how they mm-hmm. have really really big eyes? And there was one, I don't remember the name of the one, but you would scratch. Oh and, yeah, that was the the llama, the older llama the that the llama mm-hmm. and it would chatter its teeth kind of. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Okay, those are really big teeth." <laughs> Yeah, and they're kind of—they don't have teeth on the top, right? I or, don't think so. I think they're like sheep. They're kind of like they have this huge. Um, would you consider that an underbite? What is that thing? It, lo- it looks, yeah, it looks like a huge underbite with yeah. the bottom teeth coming out, and this one particular. So we have some noise going on in the background. I don't know if you can hear it. Robert is downstairs making us ceviche for dinner. So there's a lot of chopping. Yeah, this, this isn't our usual podcasting scenario. So you're you're hearing a lot more of my my life <laughs> as opposed to the normal times when I podcast in in the bedroom with pillows all around, right. blankets hung up on the door and stuff. Yeah. Everyone has to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> not, that's not lot, happening today. There's a lot going on. It'll be interesting to hear, when we listen back to this if it sounds as loud on the recording as it does right now. Right. <laughs> interesting. Right. But anyway. So, um, yeah, the the uh, uh, llama that she was scratching, like, sticks his head around and, and, and closes his eyes and just kind of chatter its teeth. It was so happy. <laughs> you could just tell. It was enjoying having its back scratched. But I'm, you know, I'm not used to being around animals like that. I'm a, I live in the city. You're a city girl. I'm a city girl. I live in the city. And so I've never, to be actually in the corral with these animals. And they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. They're perfect. I think it's relatively safe in there. But, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's something new, like it's new to me, I was sort of. Yeah. I had a, actually what I was really thinking is how I felt really anxious. But I thought, do not let anyone know that you feel anxious. (laughs) Because. (laughs) <laughs> That's just not cool. Anyway, so well, yes, but they're they're darling. We got to see the animals, and then we saw the the processing operation, and then I got my yarn. Oh, we should before we talk about the yarn, let's talk a little bit more about the trip. Yeah. So on the way down, we stopped in San Luis Obispo, and we stopped there because there's two things. There's good food there, mm-hmm. and also because we wanted to stop in at yarn at the adobes and so this is a yarn shop that we had been both been to when we did the yarn crawl back when we first started the actually it was before we started the podcast yes because our little sample was our sample recording was done that night at the restaurant yeah yeah and and that's and that i think is added as a outtake for episode one or episode two yeah so anyway it was back in 14 when we started the podcast that we went to this yarn crawl. And at that time, the yarn shop was spread throughout a couple of rooms and opened onto the back patio area. And it was small, really small. Mm -hmm. Like you had to, you had to like turn sideways and breathe in (laughs) to let people pass you in certain areas. And now it's in the room at the front of the building, same building, but it's in a room at the front of the building, and it's, so it's more open. It's nicer in the standpoint that it's more open, and mm-hmm. you can get to the yarn more easily, and you can see the yarn better because it's more well lit. But it was a little bit more mysterious when it mm-hmm. was in multiple rooms, and you kind of had to go around the corner and, oh, look what's here. Yeah, and it was it was fun uh, having access to the patio. Mm-hmm. Um, that was nice. Yeah. So anyway, while I was there, I added to my little collection of Habu yarn. Mm-hmm. I bought, they have a pretty good selection of the Habu silk. So I bought this one called... Um, a165 to- token token visco silk and so it's it's actually a 100% silk and i looked it up on one of the websites just for a description 
and it says is a lovely fine silk yarn that is similar to linen in texture which is true it's very papery mm -hmm. I don't know if you can talk yeah. about noises that was probably a little close to the microphone but it's a little papery filling um, and it's a lace weight actually it's a, it's a really thin thin lace weight like almost like thread like you hold it with something else but I don't know that I will do that because so I bought that and it's in an eggplant color and then what I was thinking of is I have a sumugi silk in a red, really pretty red. And so I'm thinking I'm going to put them together in something. So one of them has 520 yards. The other one has 450 yards. So I could do something where, where I hold them together mm -hmm. for part of it and then hold them separately mm -hmm. for, for parts of it. So, so Kelly, are those the same weight? Well, they're close to the same weight. The eggplant color silk is a 1 slash 20. Mm -hmm. Those are the weaving weights that weavers use for the weight of the yarn. And the, the 1 just means it's a singles, but the 20 has to do with how fine it is. Okay. So the 20 is a pretty fine yarn. And then the Sumugi silk, the red one, is a 217. So it's a two-ply and then its weight is a 17 as compared to a 20. So it's a little heavier, but it's not significantly So the heavier. smaller the number, the heavier the heavier yes. The weight. Okay. Yes. It has to do, this. the number, the 20 and the 17 have to do with how many hanks you can get from a pound. Hmm. Some, it's, it's kind of an anachronistic measurement from old time weaving and... Sort of like shrimp. Like shrimp or, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, what do you call them? Twelves? Tens? I don't eat shrimp, so I'm not oh. sure, but I know, what you're, I know what you're talking about. But the number of shrimp. That's how many fit in a box or, or, or like, per pound. Yeah, like the number of shrimp per pound is then the number that's uh, for this size. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway. sorry, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, just, it's the same idea. Yeah. The 20 has to do with how, how much you can get. The 20 and the 17 mm. have to do with how much you can get out of the same amount. But I am really happy that I remembered the red yeah. correctly because, it, you know, not every red would go with the eggplant. Yeah, no, those but, are really nice. But this is a red that definitely will. So I have several Habu yarns that I've had for a while, and a couple of them are really old, and I haven't ever done anything with them. So I guess listeners should not... Uh, Hold their breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Waiting for me to make something out of it. But anyway, that was my that was what I ended up with from the and, and I didn't yarn buy the I didn't buy anything at at yarn of the adobes at yarn of the adobe. I didn't mm -hmm. buy anything. It's a nice little shop. It's small, I think, pretty small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and then we went and had lunch. We had a bratwurst and sauerkraut at a mm -hmm. <laughs> place called the Grill in San Luis Obispo. So that was nice. And then we got back in the car. We got back in the car. And so it was three hours down there to Lompoc. Three, yeah, three hours to Lompoc, three hours back. So we were in the car for a long time. We got a lot of knitting done because Robert drove. Mm hmm. And you would think that we would just be tired when we got home. Mm hmm. It was, it was not super late. It was evening. Mm hmm. But what was the first thing that I did? Can anyone guess what the first thing I did was? Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> you were here. I wound off skeins of my yarn from mm -hmm. my cones and washed them so that I could swatch with them the next day. So now I have little skeins of each of the types of yarn that I've been experimenting with. And I've made two swatches. I made a swatch with the Rambouillet that, oh my gosh, I love this. It's so nice. And I actually, I love the Merino, too. It's also nice. They're both really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now I'm swatching with Shetland. And I, I was doing it while we, while we were recording, but I put it away because I, I think I'm going to try a little cable on my swatch. Mm -hmm. So just to see what they look like. But the yarns are really nice. I, yeah, I'm really they're really um, and, very nice. And again, these were not... I don't think, none of my fleeces were the prize-winning 
Mm -mm. most expensive fleece in the bunch. We... Well, at Black Sheep, for sure, we didn't get the best fleeces in the bunch because people, st ladies started lining up at Black Sheep Gathering. Right after the judging, they closed down the building for like an hour while they get ready for the show, for the sale, and, you know, arrange everything on the tables. And there were people who left the judging and then went and stood in line. Right. Right and, outside the building. And when they opened the doors, when they opened the doors, they literally started running mm -hmm. to yeah. grab the fleeces that they wanted. Yeah. So, so we did not get the primo, you know, most popular fleeces. And I am beyond thrilled with how well they turned out. It, just that you, really what it says is you don't need to have that. You spend a ton of money on the prize winning fleece. Just a, to get nice yarn. Well, I say a mediocre. That's not what it, <laughs> but uh, but uh, just a, a reasonably priced. Yeah. Um, you know, just a nice, nice. I mean, they're nice, nice, nice yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like the Black Sheep Gathering has, I think, has really nice quality fleeces, mm -hmm. and the Monterey County Wool Auction also has nice quality yeah. fleeces. But again, you know, they're not all. They're not all the. Uh, what do they call it? The grand champion, you know, and and I'm I'm not sure I would be any happier with the yarn made from the grand champion fleece mm -hmm. than I am right now. These yeah. are really beautiful, yeah. and the swatch. And, and I think the other thing that I think this says is you also do need to before you make a judgment about a fleece or a yarn, knit with it mm -hmm. until you have the knitted fabric. You don't know for sure what things are going to look like. Yeah. So, yeah, very pretty, and I'm very excited to swatch with the other. I have the Shetland is on the needles right now, and then I have, um, I still have a Romney to swatch with, and then the Lincoln, or no, Corydale Border Lester cross to swatch with. So, yeah, I've been having fun swatching. And then we've also had been having a lot of fun dyeing. Well, and before we get to dyeing, I'll say that I did buy some yarn at the Ranch oh, right. I bought some skeins of 60% um, alpaca, 40% merino. And it's kind of fun. Her her skeins have the name of the... Alpaca? Yeah, the alpaca. So this is uh, Daffodil. And we met Daffodil. We did. She was out there mm -hmm. in the pasture. So um, that was fun. So I bought that. But anyway, yeah, so now when we came home... Yesterday, we started dying. We um, wound off Hanks. How many did we do? We had 10, I we think. We had 10. 10. Mm -hmm. we, did one, some... we, each had one, we each had one of each type. Yeah. And so then we start, started experimenting with dying. Some of the fleece is uh, white, and some are gray. Some are more brownish gray, have a little bit of a brown. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've been experimenting dying the grays that's been really interesting mm -hmm. we've done a couple techniques we like uh, wetting the skein and putting it in a mason jar and pouring the dye over it and then putting it in the canning pot and letting it cook in there yeah simmer heat up yeah some took the dye well mm -hmm. some colors well i did one yesterday where i just put one color on it and the i so i twisted the hank put it in the uh, mason jar poured one color over one side of it and then my idea was the next day is I was going to uh, untwist it retwist it again and put it in and then pour another color over but it was quite pale it doesn't really we're how would you describe that it's it um which color are you that was the one out? that I put just the blue oh yes that was the marine I, I think I put cobalt blue over. yeah and then the merino I put purple over that and that the merino fleece seems to just like soak up the dye but not change color yeah i mean a, mine is it's a darker it's a darker fleece anyway which is makes it harder to over dye but there's a quality about that particular fleece that the color of it it can absorb the dye but you really don't see, see that it, color. Yeah. it still just looks it, it still just looks gray and then kelly because i never can remember which of these is which but the one that you have over there on the arm of the sofa, the one that has that, sh sh um, th that one. This Romney? The Romney. That one, um, we dyed some blue, mm -hmm. and we dyed some with um, Dusty Rose and Burgundy 
and I'm trying to think what the other color was. I think it was the um, uh, the chestnut. Oh, okay. So the brown, a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown, and that one turned out re- is beautiful. It is beautiful. Uh, yeah. So you can see the dusty rose, the burgundy, the chestnut, and then also sections where it's just the the natural colored fiber, mm-hmm. um, and it, it has such a luster to it. Yes, the, the, that the yarn is so little, shiny. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And then we we did a blue green one too, mm-hmm. and that's beautiful. That's the fleece that Robert bought. Yeah. Well, he didn't buy it. I bought it. But it's the, one, on. It's the one he bid on. He bid yeah. on. And then um, what I think was interesting, the one I did today, and now that's this one, what is, uh, this um, Rambouillet. Rambouillet, and it's it's white. And that one I did um, bright Kelly green and lilac. And now how would you describe those colors? It's like fluorescent green. The green is fluorescent. The lilac is you use qu- uh, quite a bit of the purple, so it's a pretty saturated kind of royal purple. Mhm. And so what I did with that is I had the skein fairly I mean not dripping wet, but wetter than I normally do. And then I put the dye in each mason jar in the panning pot and then put each end opposite ends of the skein in the two pots of dye and then it was in there for a while and we just waited until all the dye had absorbed and by osmosis had traveled up the skein mm-hmm. and of course then we were laughing when I took it out of the pot because oh my gosh those colors were so bright <laughs> and um, but then I just I over dyed it with navy and have you seen it since I took it out I, of the pot? I just I took it out it's out it's I hot. just looked at it I just opened the pot and looked in it a little bit a little while ago, and I thought, oh, this is pretty, but I wasn't registering that that's the one that it was. It yeah. looked very different. It looked very different. And then the other one I think is so interesting is the one that I did with the um, chestnut and olive. And you left a lot of it, a lot of it got left open and just yes, cream colored. Because I, I don't, I don't, I, what I did is I, I wound it, I, um, instead of putting it in a skein and stuffing it in the jar, I just sort of coiled it into the jar and pressed it down in there kind of compacted it and then I poured the chestnut and the olive oh I know and I mixed up a orange oh so right I took yellow and red mixed together to make kind of an orange and then poured that over the yarn and then let it you know process in the canning jar it absorbed all the dye but when I took it out there was these large uh it, it didn't absorb it all over mm-hmm. so there's large there sections, sections that large didn't. sections that didn't have the dye and then I over dyed with turquoise and yeah, that's, that's pretty. really pretty. It reminds me of sort of kelp and the color of the bay. Mm-hmm. It, it's yeah, it's it's pretty. It's a it's a Monterey Bay color. Yeah. So it's just been really fun to just experiment with these colors and then how the how the colors change when you put another color on top of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's been fun. I've. I've tried, I've done that some, but most of my dyeing I haven't done in two stages like this, and that was fun today. And then the one I did yesterday too, Kelly, you know, the one where I, um, um, I stamped it? Mm-hmm. I just took the... That one um, came out great. I took a, 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 ma- a small mason jar, and I would just, with a paintbrush, I would paint the dye on the rim of the, of the mason jar and then stamp the yarn. And we were talking about, I know you don't see it when you, when you actually finish it, you don't actually see it circle because the yarn's all, you know, re-skained. But it'd be kind of interesting to find different things to stamp your yarn with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if you had sponges. Yeah. Um, and then what would be more time effective instead of painting? Right. The edge would just to be, have a container where you could just dip right. it. Right. And yeah. then... And then stamp. Like putting salt on the rim of a margarita <laughs> glass. <laughs> right. Do it that way. Yeah. Anyway, so was that that was really, it's been fun experimenting with all of these mm-hmm. and then over dyeing. So um, I think it'd be fun to go to the Goodwill and find things like potato mashers. Mm-hmm. You know, that you could. I wonder if it would really matter. You know, while you're not. stamping them, you get different shapes, but... Once it's once it's in a skein, I wonder if the different shapes would make any difference at all in the yeah. skein. Like if I did one with a jar lid, and you did one with a potato masher, <laughs> it probably make no difference. Yeah, I don't know. But just like what I what I was trying to do is just get small amounts of dye mm-hmm. on the so I, there might be other techniques, but just a small amount of dye in little sections of, on the yarn. I think I'm calling that one. What did I say out in the, the garage? Broken pinata. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
So, yeah, so the dyeing's been really fun. It has been, yeah. Yeah. We use uh, Jacquard Acid Dyes, or I, I have a couple different brands, but the acid dyes with citric acid and vinegar, mm-hmm. uh, and or vinegar, depending on, on what I have available. But it's, it's a lot of fun. You, you want to make sure if you are doing that kind of dyeing, you want to make sure that you have all of your dyeing utensils are utensils that you don't use uh, for food. Yeah. And the other thing that, that you need to be careful with is with the powdered dyes is to use them as powder as little as possible. Mm-hmm. So I, I, a while back, took my dyes and mixed them into solutions so that I have a couple of different strengths, but you know, a certain amount of dye with a certain amount of water to make a 1% solution or Mm -hmm. a 2% solution. And then when you're, then when you're doing your dyeing, you, you pull your dye from those jars of liquid rather than always pulling your dye from the, from the jars of powder Mm -hmm. because the dye powder is, you, you really should wear a, a respirator or a mask if you're going to be working with yeah. with dye powder. And then some of the yarn, you know, we put in the mason jars in the canning, canning pot. pot. Uh, some I just wrapped up in foil and put in the oven mm-hmm. and heated it. I think I had it set at about 150. Yeah, it was some. It was between 150. I'm 200. trying to think of my oven. I have a low setting and I have a 250. I think, and it was in between. We had it set in between yeah. low and 250, yeah. so. And then you did some in the crock pot. Yeah, I did. I have an old crock pot that I got from Goodwill that, it's a small one. So it really, two skeins of yarn in the crock, actually I did, yeah, I did two of them in the crock pot. Two skeins is a pretty tight fit in the crock pot, but I did two skeins with kind of turquoise and, turquoise and green. Kind of the same colors as my, my top. The ED that I'm mm-hmm. making, I use those colors, and so I did those, and then overdyed one of them this morning with black, which I really like that one. It came out good, and then I I did another one in the crock pot. I added a little a little bit more color, a little bit more brown, to oh. one of the others that I had been that I had dyed uh, yesterday. So yeah, we had a great time. That, that was really fun. And I don't think we're done. Are we going back? Out no, there? I don't think we're done either. I think we have, <laughs> we have, we have. I think five more skeins of Romney that are that are skeined up, mm-hmm. and then anything else we want to put into a skein. There's there's plenty of dye out there. It's all set up, ready yeah. to go. It's fun. So there's just one more thing that I wanted to mention. Um, I was looking in. I haven't had much time to spend on Ravelry lately, but I. I just wanted to mention a couple of projects uh, that I've seen in our Ravelry group by our group members. Um, one of them is a Tabitha, and oh, I love this project. Of course, it's a poncho, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's called, she, she calls it that 70s poncho. <laughs> and the pattern is the classic poncho pattern by Bertha Peterson. But she used her first hand spun. And it is so pretty. It, very nice. Yeah, it it's has beautiful. different shades of brown and some some of the white, you know, cream colored fleece, and then all these different colors of natural fleece. Uh, you know, and it is true. There's very many shades of gray when you start looking at fleeces, mm-hmm. um, and and a lot of them tend toward the browns. And then there's a, you know, there are the true browns, also. Anyway, she has a striped triangle poncho just. Uh, very much like the '70s look poncho, mm-hmm. but really classy looking because of the the natural colors and also the the fact that it's her first hand spun is just really cool. It's great to see people knitting with their hand spun. And then the other one was Mickey, and she also was looking at uh, or was working with hand spun, and she's doing the Shetland wool. Shetland wool study shawl. So she's experimenting with different shades of Shetland and has been spinning uh, gradient shades of Shetland wool and is making a shawl and now she wants to make a sweater. But I just, I, I love that too because again, the natural colors and different shades of brown and gray. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I think I'm really just loving, I mean, all the dyeing we're doing 
is fun, but I think I'm just loving the natural colors. Mm -hmm. Just seeing the yarns made from the fleeces, the three different colors of gray that I have. It's just amazing how how they come out when once they're spun up. Very pretty. So Mickey and Tabitha posted the projects that caught my eye this week. Yeah, very nice. So anything else? That's it. I All think right. we should probably, it's ready. It's time for a cocktail now, isn't uh, it? I think it might be. And then more dying? Yes. Or, yeah, that could be good. <laughs> <laughs> dying under the influence. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's see what we come up with, Kelly. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. All right. <laughs> Pictures to follow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. We have links for iTunes, Google Play Music, YouTube, and others. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2Us. Doing doing our our part part for for World Fleece. Fleece. Are they the same weight? They're a little bit different. (laughs) <laughs> and yet again, another interrupt. We're so unprofessional in this episode, aren't we? <laughs> that is Robert's phone. <laughs> and we're blocked in, so we can't go get it. <laughs> so maybe, oh, that's my phone. Yes, it's your phone. So maybe we get a pass on professionalism on this episode. Yes. So, yeah, we had...